Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and welcome to our Guilds of Ravnica Best of the Rest series where we talk about all the cards in the set and not spoiled individually as we prepare for pre-release. In this video, we're talking all things white and blue. White and blue cards galore. I do hope you enjoyed the video and if you do remember to hit that like button right down there, helps out a lot. Candlelight Vigil is 4 mana for an enchant creature aura. Enchanted creature gets plus 3 plus 2 and has Vigilance. This is a bit expensive and it does open you up to being 2 for 1 really easily, but if this sticks, you have a giant creature that can function as an attacker and blocker. This isn't the type of limited card you're going to prioritize, but if you are in white, maybe have a bunch of tokens you want to make more relevant in combat. I could see using this as a curve filler if you're low on playables. Do not prioritize this in your draft picks, but it'll fit okay. Collar of the Culprit is 4 mana for an instant, destroy a target creature with toughness 4 or greater. Now this card is something we need to talk about. Guilds of Ravnica comes with a plethora of creatures that have 4 more toughness. And while this isn't as universal as some other removal spells we've seen, it's still quite good. I wouldn't want to first pick this too often as it will blank against certain strategies, but it's an early to mid pick for sure. You can't shy away from removal like this, especially instant speed removal and removal that will get rid of huge bombs. Play this card. Crush Contraband is 4 mana for an instant, choose one or both, exile target artifact, exile target enchantment. Hot dang, this card's amazing. We're not talking limited anymore, we're talking commander. Crush Contraband is friggin' excellent. Not only do you have the flexibility to wreck artifacts and enchantments, but it has a single color identity and it's instant speed and it exiles them so you don't have to worry about them anymore. Excellent design. This will get thrown into a bunch of commander decks for the versatility alone. Fine card. Demotion is one mana for an enchant creature aura. Enchanted creature can't block and its activated abilities can't be activated. Wow. This card is seriously great. It actually doesn't matter much that the creature can still attack. But this card is meant for an attack heavy deck. Getting rid of a huge blocker is a big deal in an aggro deck, whether we're talking Selesnya, White Weenie, or Boros. Demotion is going to fit perfectly in that strategy in Standard and Limited. Yeah, I said Standard. This is one mana to help clear the way, don't underestimate that, and in Limited, it messes with activated abilities. There are so many creatures in this set with activated abilities. Demotion is cheap and powerful. Early pick for me in Limited for sure, but really only shines in aggressive decks that don't care about being attacked back. Intrusive Pack Beast is 5 mana for a 3-3 three, three beast with Vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, tap up to 2 target creatures your opponents control. This is another card you're looking to play when you're on the attack. This is probably going to be near the top of your curve in a limited deck. But by clearing the way for your team, you ensure a lot more damage to your opponent and a lot less death for your army. Simple card, 5 mana for a 3-3 with Vigilance is just fine. Not a pick you need to prioritize, but perfectly fine in the middle of the pack if your deck is leaning aggressive. Luminous Bonds is back and it's the perfect time to remind you that this is first pick worthy. Basically is removal on anything that isn't a guild mage or has a dumb activated ability. Once again, removal is always king and limited. This time is no different. Shackle those big fatties like you mean it. Great reprint. Righteous Blow is one mana for an instant. It deals two damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Another interesting reprint. This isn't a card I want four of in a deck, but I'll take one any day. There are enough small creatures in this set that give value to a reprint like this. I don't think you need to take it early in draft, but again, one copy is relatively useful for you. Skyline Scout is 2 mana for a 2 when human scout. Whenever it attacks, you may pay 2. If you do, it gains flying until end of turn. This is a curve filler, no doubt about it. The ability is fine and a good use for mana in the late game if you're trying to fly over a board stall. But most of the time, this will function as a 2-1 blocker and that's okay. It's important to have enough early drops so if you're dragging behind, he'll fill you out alright. Sworn Companions is 3 mana for a sorcery. Create 2 one, one soldier tokens with lifelink. If this card didn't create soldiers specifically with lifelink, I'd be much less excited, but the addition of lifelink does intrigue me. We are talking 2 one, ones at sorcery speed, which really isn't anything to get excited about, but lifelink is going to help you out a bit. These can make fine blockers, chumping and gaining some life along the way. 
They can make fine attackers in an attack-heavy deck, possibly gaining life over multiple turns. I don't consider this a high priority pick in Limited, but again, we're talking curve pillars, right? Sworn Companions does increase your board presence with a relevant keyword and card type, tokens. You could play worse cards. Take Heart is one mana for an instant target creature, gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. You gain one life for each attacking creature you control. Wow, the Wizards is not being subtle at all here. Boros, Selesnia, y'all are meant to attack, and this card proves it. Take Heart is good at doing one thing, attacking. You swing out, use this as a combat trick to win a battle, and then gain enough life to help you survive a swing back. This card wants you to brawl, and brawl you shall. Only play this in incredibly aggressive decks, and even then only ever play one of these. 10th District Guard is 2 mana for a 2-2 human soldier. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus 0, plus 1 until end of turn. Okay, I'm going to tell you where this is useful. You drop a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, your opponent drops a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, turn 3 rolls around. You play this, messing with your own mana. Give your 2-2 two, two, plus 0, plus 1, then get in for 2 damage. Woo, I guess, look. 10th District Guard, at worst, is a bear, a 2-2 two, two for 2, and like many cards we've looked at, will fill a curve just fine, but don't go out of your way to play this. The Enter the Battlefield trigger isn't stupendous by any means. Now on to blue cards. Capture Sphere is 4 mana for an enchant creature or a with flash. When it enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Yes! Blue removal looking as good as ever, and a common so gross. This is absolutely an early pick card in Limited, and it has flesh. It's amazing. Not only does it hold the creature in prison, but it taps it too, which means you can use this before your opponent's attack. You can use it before your own attack to clear a blocker. Capture Sphere is going to make the cut in every single blue Limited deck from now until ever. Great card, great way to start the blue section of the video. Dazzling Lights is one mana for an instant. Target creature gets minus three, minus zero so until end of turn. Surveil two. See, this is what gets me about cards like these. I don't actually care that much about the minus three, minus zero. So. I just like seeing Surveil. I want to Surveil for one mana. If you have Surveil Synergy cards, this is a great enabler for a cheap cost, and it has the incidental value of saving you from some damage or saving one of your creatures from death. I'd only ever want to play this in decks that can utilize the power of Surveil, but if they can, it might actually be worth it. Leapfrog is 3 mana for a 3-1 frog. It has flying as long as you've cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn. First things first, that's a frog creature type, which means we're one step closer to being able to play frog tribal, and that might be the best news this century. Second, Hilarious card, I don't think it's particularly useful, but if you have a spell heavy limited deck, attacking with a 3 power flyer isn't nothing. It's a bit clunky though, and I think there are often times better options at this cost. Still, Frog Tribal, the dream lives, just you know, rib it. Muse Drake is 4 mana for a 1-3 Drake with flying. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Yeah, I'm gonna play this thing forever. No, I won't prioritize it in draft, obviously, but it'll totally fill my curb nicely and replace itself in my hand. It's a solid flying blocker in case your opponent found a way to break Leapfrog, and it'll do just fine on the ground as well. A card like this is meant for a slower, more controlling deck. If you're running anything even remotely aggressive, this card is straight bad for you. Don't run it. Control good, aggro bad. All right, next card. Selective Snare is X and 1 blue for a sorcery return X target creatures the creature type of your choice to their owner's hand. Wow, isn't this a tribal hoser for days? We're talking tokens and standard, soldiers and standard, any tribal deck and commander. Selective Snare is going to prey on so many tribal lovers, it's ridiculous. It is sorcery speed, which is unfortunate, but the tempo gain is undeniable if you're against a tribal deck, which, let's be honest, you probably are in commander look. Hate the sorcery speed, but this has value in two formats that will enjoy tribal decks. Too slow for modern, but strong enough for standard to fizzle tokens and commander to make your friends unhappy. It's, it's a nice card. Vidalkin Mesmerist is two mana for a 2 one Vidalkin Wizard. Whenever it attacks target creature and opponent controls, it gets minus two, minus zero until end of turn. 
What an interesting card. Two mana for a two one is a fine curve filler. That trigger does give it some serious value though. You're looking to play this in an aggressive deck. Something that's going to take advantage of the momentary weakness of the enemy. Makes for a solid early game attacker considering most games start with two two staring at each other. This one breaks that stalemate and gets in for two first. It's, it's kind of nice. We're going to talk about Wall of Mist and Wish Coin Crab together. Both of them are commons. Both have giant butts. Both are designed to defend control decks. These are the commons that you're going to want to look for if you're building a slower deck in Limited. Don't take either of these early, as no one else will either, but these are great late pack picks to fill out your defensive needs. Today we looked at the rest of the white and blue cards for Guilds of Ravnica. What do you think? Pre-release is right around the corner at this point, so please talk to me. Where are you right now? How are you feeling? From what we saw today, I think white and blue both came to play with solid cards representative of their respective strengths. White has some strong creatures with good support and a slew of removal. Blue has disruption for days, enablers for its mechanics, and both attackers and defenders. A lot of versatility up in here. So excited for pre-release. Make sure to stay tuned to the channel for the rest of this limited review series as we approach our pre-release guide coming at you real soon. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Gills of Ravnica booster boxes are pre-ordering right now for a cool $90 each. $90! If you don't have a local game store or yours charges way too much, just click the link on the screen. Helps the channel. I'll send you so much free candy. Like all the free candy, like M&Ms and Reese's and Hershey bars, whatever you want. It'll be like your Willy Wonka, but a Willy Wonka who plays magic. I'm getting off topic. Link for great prices on boxes. I love you. Enjoy. Oh my God, I love this card. I love this card. I love it.